Um, okay, so at 10 volts, uh, we see that we have a phase angle between the voltage and the current of 18 degrees. So our phase angle is 18 degrees. Our voltage input over here is 10.11 volts RMS. Okay, it's the root mean square of the peak voltage. See, the peak voltage is the top part, top and bottom part of the sinusoid signal. And we take the RMS value of this, and it's automatically computed by these meters. They give you the RMS value because that's necessary to do power calculations with. So all the meters report back in RMS. So we have 10.11 volts RMS. The current input we pick up from this sensor. And so that's reading 0 0.041, 41 milliamps RMS. And then, of course, we have that phase angle of 18 degrees. So, we can do a power calculator. We see how much power is coming into that transformer by doing voltage times the current times the cosine of 18 degrees. And it tells us what the real power, what the real wattage is. Because normally if you just take voltage times the current, that tells you what the apparent power is. And that's part of this, this power triangle. Now this is typically used by the power company. The meter on your home only registers what's called real power. <coughs> that of course is on this x-axis. The y-axis is a reactive power and the power company, it, it doesn't register on their meters at all. Okay, it only registers real power. So they want to see your home only using real power. That's why they hang capacitors out there on their, on their networks to adjust this power factor such that this phase angle is always zero. They want to see zero. But here we see 18 <coughs> degrees. So in that case, we compute what the power is to this trans being delivered into this transformer, and we see that we have, when I do this little calculation here, 10.11 times 0 0.041 <coughs> amps times the cosine of 18 degrees. So that gives us a real power of 0.394 watts. Okay. Now we want to look at the output power that we're <coughs> that's being dissipated by that resistor. So we say that V out equals, and we just read it right off the meters, 2.865 volts RMS. I out. 0.117 amps RMS because our phase angle is zero. And I was showing that to some engineers yesterday that yes indeed, uh, the phase angle is zero degrees. So I have a question. Yes. In the input, what does the angle depend on? Pardon me? What does the angle here in the input depend on? It's the... Uh, you're driving an inductive load, which means that you're putting power in, power's coming back out, power in, power out. That's the reactive nature of an inductive input on a transformer. Because all it is is just coils of wire around a transformer core material. Inductive right. so so inductive. It's, it's an inductive. inductive. This 18 right. is a, gold, it's a golden ratio based value, cosine of 18. Yeah, so it's the real, so you are interested in the real power that's being dissipated. 
okay, by the device. The reactive side is returning back to your generator. All right. If I took the sine of 18 degrees, that, that would tell me um, the reactive power that's coming back to the generator. Okay, so if I took 10.11 times 0 0.04. So the sine one is one, one half of the inverse of the golden ratio. The sine of 18 degrees. So we're seeing that the reactive side of that. Yes, yeah, same, same reactive. Yeah, sir. I don't know why you see e equals 0 0.1 maybe to 8. You refer to that as VARs. Okay, not watts, but VARs. So I got 1.28 VARs coming back to the generator with this phase angle relationship. But the real component that's being, the power that's being dissipated as real heat, that's what the power company's interested in because that's what they bill you on, is the real heat that's being used by your home. Well, we see that's only 0.394 watts. So when we do our load calculation on this side, we then say that it's out, out, that's equal to 2.865. Times 0.117. So our load power <coughs> is 0 0.335 watts. <coughs> so then we say that the COP, because we're interested in the power power loss in this transformer. So the COP calculation is. The load power divided by the source power. Okay, so that's 0 0.335 divided by 0 0.0394 equals 0 0.35 our transformer efficiency is 85%, which is very typical of a traditional transformer. They're always around 80 to 90% efficient. And that's all you're ever going to get. And that's all that mainstream science knows, is that this transformer will never, ever be over 100%. It'll always be less than 100%, and 85% efficiency is about right. Okay? So, let's plug in our transformer and see what that efficiency is. <coughs> Quick question for you. A high-frequency transformer, is that high, more efficient than a low-frequency, like the 60 Well, all that it means that a higher frequency, when you operate a transformer at a higher frequency, is that... Uh, it allows you to to use smaller magnetic material. Oh, okay. okay. So when you run at a higher frequency, you, you can use smaller yeah. magnetics. Yeah. You can change your frequency. The frequency all the way to what you're using. No, if I were to run this, this is a generic standard. It's quite different. That might be. 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 In theory, that transformer so is this is just a good test because we want to see what, you know, so beyond that, change the average efficiency. Yeah, that's 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 in 85 percent, mm -hmm. it's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay so we'll plug in I our think, transformer. I, I think I know why. Because okay. <coughs> that, that's what matches <coughs> the transformer. Mm -hmm. That's. Makes sense. Now, this is our transformer design, and you'll see right off the bat here that it, it looks very different than this other classic transformer. Now, this transformer runs at a higher frequency, and it runs at a higher frequency because of the number of turns around this magnetic material. And this magnetic material here is called met glass. It's an amorphous... Um, 
magnetic material. Did you ask them to take their conversation someplace else? Oh, is it there? I told them already. Well, is it? Are they uh, glass? Close the door. Yeah. Yeah. No, close no, the we're door closing the yeah. door. We're closing now. It's a amorphous <laughs> material that's very thin and it's wrapped on machines to form this, um, this toroid shape. And then they cut it in half so that you're able to get your windings in there. How do you cut it's it? Pronounced, the diamonds all? It's pronounced med glass, right? Or, yeah, it's med glass. So yeah. it's got yeah. glass in it. <coughs> mm, no, well, it's, it's, a, crystalline, I, it's yeah. a crystalline magnetic yeah. material. Mm, carbide. Might yeah. It has a very no, low it's, coercive it's soft. force. It's actually quite soft. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's very soft. It's, it's not like a hard magnet. At all. Oh, it isn't. Okay, it's a very soft, and it's great for this type of uh, work. So you These are very small you cut, type they come of uh, transformers. Mm -hmm. they, they, they come in two that. pieces like that? Or do you oh, yeah, them? yeah, yeah. They come like this. They're right off the shelf. Oh. Okay, so now this transformer operates at about 3,200 hertz. So I'm going to take it up in frequency. And it's most efficient at this at this frequency. So do we, do we need that frequency to make it uh, higher than unity? Um, it, it's just mo uh, it's more efficient at the higher frequency. What's the maximum? Yeah, more so. It, it's it's a better material than the material that they use in a standard transformer. Transformer, this is the core material that they use. Electrical steel. And it's a, like a silicon steel. Yeah. You know, it's not nearly as efficient as this med glass. So that's, that's more than You can run these med like glass like things at ferrite. Or it's more like ferrite. Right. It's on the other. Yeah, yeah, it's on the other spectrum. Much lower permeability. Yeah. Okay, so we're at 3200 hertz. So let's apply one. I believe med glass has the highest permeability. Yes. Property material you can get yeah, it's that they know. <clears throat> it's better than far ferrite, isn't it? So you're going for the same input voltage as last For a different time. application, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Same load, 25 ohms. Okay, so right away, when I <coughs> hook this up, it's powering a load. We see something, we see a behavior here that's very different than an ordinary transformer. And we see that, we see a huge increase in our phase between the voltage and the current. It's kind of bouncing around. You know, it's making a coarse calculation here between 83. Um, we're looking at something that's between 83 and 74. We'll just go with that. <coughs> this high phase angle 
between a voltage and current, which means that this input is much more reactive than a conventional transformer. Because the conventional transformer, we're at 18 degrees, and here we're way up there at 74, 72 degrees. So right away, you know, we see something, you know, this is much different. And so what that means is that there's more power coming back to your generator. Okay, it's reactive, meaning that power coming in, power coming out. And there's more power coming out than in a conventional transformer. So what that means is that we're using less power to drive our, our real load here. And that's necessary when we figure out our efficiency calculation. Okay, so we'll go with uh, that phase angle of 74 degrees. And with this scope, you can actually see that here. I'll expand this out. So your input current is less than last time, right? And with the other transformer? Well, we'll see. The apparent power is higher. Okay. But you see what we're interested in is real power being dissipated you know, by the load and by the transformer. Okay. We want to know what the loss is of this transformer. Because we know with this classical transformer here, we have an efficiency of 85%. And we know we can never go over 100%. Okay, so what we look for in this transformer here, okay, where it crosses the zero line, where the AC signal crosses zero, we then draw a line up to see where that peak is very close to 90 degrees. So 5% over. And, and, and if that phase angle between the voltage and current, if that was at 90 degrees, the thing isn't dissipating any power at all. The efficiency would be 100%. Okay? <laughs> but here, we're a little less than that. So it is consuming some power. And we'll find out how much power it's consuming here. So, so we can see that when we draw that line, we're pretty close to 90% there. So let's go back. Now we get a more accurate phase angle when we have a lot of cycles in here. It's just that it's just the way that these scopes work. So we have a phase angle. Get a coffee, yeah, I just silenced it. Okay, there's our current. So we can get our current coming in. Voltage is ten point zero. Volts RMS and our current is two four two four zero bumps around the amps RMS. And we see that we had that phasing of about seventy. Voltage in times the current in times the cosine of 72 degrees. So that'll give us our real power being supplied to the transformer.
was bouncing. Depends on okay. how many what is like that shown in the square output. Oh, okay. So I wonder where oh. is the sweet <coughs> spot the most efficient was 10.56 volts. Output the current yeah, that from a is the same frequency. Mm -hmm. This frequency to the other mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Shuts down, you know, this thing shut off automatically. Okay, so our COP. So, question. So, the 72 degrees, that was bouncing around in some range, and you did just pick 72 degrees? Yeah, and then it's uh, so steady there. So, can you find out what the sweet spot is? Like, if you repeat this, does it average out to be some degree that is most efficient? Um, well, as I drop the frequency, the transformer will become less efficient. So, anything below yeah, it's 70? It's like a range. Because um, what interests you? I was shown a yeah. graph. I was shown a graph yesterday in my presentation. Where in other words, the more you gear it up, the more efficient it becomes. Yeah. But how does that relate to the degrees? In other words, is it more or less efficient at 72, 73, or 71? Well, this is typically, typically the range that you're looking for. Oh, okay. <coughs> okay. 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 Now, yeah. what I want to do is probably show you the most amazing thing there is. Okay, now this yeah. is really interesting. Plus that feedback thing that you did yesterday too was interesting. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to turn this guy down. Does your phase shift uh, have any relationship to the frequency? The phase shift? Yeah, because, yeah, because this determines... Yeah, at 18 degrees before... The power. With a lower frequency and you go up right. the frequency, now you're, set, uh, what, 72? Right, so I wonder if you use the other transformer at this frequency, what okay, would the well, angle we can be? Decrease the, well, let's decrease the frequency and see what happens. And Start to take it down. Sure. Now the scope is sitting there averaging. Okay, it gives, the gives me a nice smooth. <laughs> 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 so we've got some apples for modulation. You have the formula, right? Hmm? Yeah, you have the formula to determine the angle of the function. Yeah, it's, it's very basic. It's basic. Yeah, That's I guess it's standard. basic. Yeah. yeah. That's a standard calculation. Yeah, okay, yeah. there we go. Yeah. It's reactance power. See, the phase angle starts to increase. It starts to become a little less efficient. 
You have more output now. Yes, yes, right. Yeah. The frequency right. decreases. It's, the angle also decreases. It's all dependent on the inductance yeah, value. Uh, mm -hmm. The inductance value and the frequency make that correct, that proper times phase shift. Times mm -hmm. Yeah, so you get to it gives it turn it to get it right. Yeah. I wonder why he didn't use the same frequency. So because so this one's a different, it, this one's a different inductance. I don't know why I didn't know besides the fact that this one works at this frequency and that one works at that frequency. Well, that the but in theory, that should be much more reactive. Reactive. Yeah. 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 That should be What's the percentage? Yeah, the other one, of course, will get you released now. Um, yeah, yeah, which is 600. Yeah. Uh, so it's a value shift. It's probably... Mm -hmm. And it would, that would probably be less efficient. It's just probably somewhere around 70 percent you know I mean? more efficient. That may actually be less efficient. On the input but it depends side. on the load yeah. too. That can change the variable load. And output. Okay, but we see a huge gain in yeah. our output here. So when I take uh, the cosine, um, it's, uh, it's 69 <coughs> degrees now. Try it again. Correct. Yeah. Okay. See, the next thing that I want to show you is something that's really amazing. Okay. Yeah, but right now we'll have to uh, do this. We'll see what the <coughs> efficiency is at this lower frequency. Okay, so current is. Okay, so it's kind of fluctuating there. Yeah, hi, Dan. We're up here. You, you can come up here if you want, but I can't talk right now. COP efficiency of um, 100, uh, an efficiency of 123%. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I thought. Yeah. 123%. Okay, now the one thing that I want to show you here is when we short the output of this transformer.
to the output of this. I'm going to short the output on this transformer. Okay, now look at that phase angle now. 96 degrees. <clears throat> now it's doing something absolutely impossible with any transformer. Maximum current flowing in here of uh, a little less than an amp, 485 milliamps. So that would be our maximum current draw. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Okay, so if you take a close look <clears throat> at this wave, you'll notice that the peak of the current is past the 90 degree mark. Okay, if you take a look at the peak, it's just slightly past the 90 degree mark. So that means that we're past uh, the efficiency of this transformer of infinity, or as I mentioned in my lecture, beyond infinity, all right? Because infinite efficiency here is at 90 degrees, or well, we're past 90 degrees. So if we say that, um, go back and capture what that, fruit, what that phase angle is. We know we're past degrees there, so let's capture some cycles. Okay, we've got some cycles there. So if we take the voltage, take the voltage times the current. degrees, which is unheard of. There is no other transformer, traditional transformer, can ever do this. We see we have number here of 5.8, a negative 5.8 watts. Okay, a negative. So we're beyond infinity, where the number goes negative. So we're sending back to the generator here. 5.8 watts. Okay. 5.8 watts is coming back to the generator. Nothing is coming back to the, to the transformer. Okay. It's supplying back to the generator 5.8 watts. Which means that if you have a, a generator here running at a power company, you're literally turning that generator into a motor. Okay, you're going to be powering their generator with 5.8 watts. That's what's so amazing about this technology. So is 90 degree is the maximum efficiency? Uh, 90 degrees, if you take the cosine of 90 degrees, That's it's zero. zero. Yeah. Okay, so when you do your efficiency calculation, zero efficiency. 
any number that's over zero is infinite. Oh, so that's uh, that's that's the input, not the output. Yeah, this is your input power oh. that we're supplying here, and that number, if you're at ninety degrees, is zero. So it's any like number that's over zero, it's going to be infinite. Yeah, so that's <coughs> output. So you're going to have an infinite efficiency at 90 degrees. But we see here that we're beyond 90 degrees. We're over 90 degrees, mm -hmm. which means that our efficiency goes negative. Mm -hmm. Okay, We're supplying back to the generator here for 5 watts of power, turning that generator into a motor. Now, who else said this You know, in the... Uh, in the alternative energy field. Jim Murray and his technology supplies energy back to the generator. But aren't you continuing to pull 10 watts? I mean, on the meter, showing me 10, but it's coming in. That's oh, volts. What's coming in? Yeah, if you look at that one's volts. voltage times the current, mm -hmm. okay. okay, it's telling you that voltage times the current, 9.8. 8, 8 times that current 1.397 13.8 watts okay 13.8 watts but the reactive power of this device is what's coming back to the generator so we're seeing a cosine you have to take the cosine <coughs> tells you what the real power is going back to the generator of 5 watts, a little bit over 5 watts. So what uh, kind of load are you having there? It's a dead the short. That's a 25 ohm resistor. But it's a dead but short right shorted. now. Oh, it's okay. a dead short. So we're only going to see the current okay, passing through this uh, winding here. Now, if we come along and say, we look at the, uh, the temperature on this. Let's see if there's any drop here. 73.9. 73.2. So, not uh, cool your amplifier and the down because you're, you have a negative power, you have a negative efficiency. Shouldn't that yeah. run cooler? Or, or am I missing something? Well, it's just a straight amp. So it's not going to, uh, you know, benefit from this. Okay. So this is why I drew this curve. This, this curve yesterday showing that, you know, at 90, at 90 degrees, okay, you have an infinite efficiency. But then, but then the transformer comes back with something like this, where you have this negative efficiency effect. So, this is uh, this is probably the most amazing part of this. Technology. This is the most amazing part of all this. Mm -hmm. And the transformer doesn't run hot like a regular transformer. Now we have out of two hundred forty thousand private shares of stock. We have 12,000 shares left at a dollar a share. That's it. At this dollar a share level. And the next level is going to be $100 a share. And that's coming up pretty quick. So uh, this is an opportunity for those of you who want to get involved. Uh, you can do it in $100 increments, $1,000 increments, most people do. And most people are doing $1,000 in for In my ex-husband's invested in this. This is, how, <laughs> this is how hot this stuff is. <laughs> he just, I just got done talking. He says, I'm in, I'm in. Wow. Is it any wider? We have 200,000 shares issued to us. Well, it's not nearly as efficient as the white sweet device. His device ran on six, yeah, 60 cycles. Did you ever figure out how he got away with that? 
and, and you having to, with this one, which is similar, you need to go higher. You should, you should be able to just change your inductance to get your 60 hertz to work, right? Well, wrap your coils um, differently. Different type of oh, configuration. Like Sweet has. Okay. See, I'm, I'm doing this effect on the secondary, on the output secondary. Oh, side. he did it on the primary. He did it on the primary. Okay. Side. So now, we'll see now what we're doing downstairs. <laughs> there, and what we're in our booth. The sucker is cold. So it's got the output shorted. Right. I mean, it should be hot. Yeah. Okay. It should blow that amplifier or amplifier off. <laughs> Okay, so what we have downstairs is that we're showing a smart pack system, which is essentially this on a printed circuit board. You know, it has a, a generator, uh, an amplifying stage, and we power the input side, and then we take the output side, we're going to rectify that, send that back into the input side, and use the excess power to keep those batteries charged, and also power our external circuits. So that's the whole smart pack concept. You got that demo downstairs? Uh, the demonstration downstairs? Of the whole pack. Oh, what I'm showing downstairs. Yeah. Is the whole pack? Yeah, it's the whole it's pack. It's downstairs for on the, you got it down there on display? Okay, I'm still working on that smart pack Oh, okay. System. Okay. That's where you're heading. Now, I'm probably just a few weeks away yeah. from finishing that. Did I hear you correctly when you're, you're talking about electron spin? When you, when you put the two gyroscopes together uh, in yeah. reverse, yeah. is that the right reason here. this is cooling off? Because of the yeah, because we're setting up motion. these opposing forces. So it's slowing down the molecular yeah. so that's motion. What we have with this. So that's why it's getting cold. Yeah, because uh, we're looking at... <laughs> See, this is what creates resistance in wires. Yeah. It's because you got these little gyroscopes called electrons. You know, you apply a force on here because it has spin, what's called spin, which is the electron has polarization as a north and south pole, what they call spin. And, so and then it has angular momentum. It it's, set, momentum it's spinning correct. there. Yeah. Okay. And so it has resistance to it. But now, when you look at a Cooper pair in a superconductor, you have something like this going on. And these are great little models for electrons. You have counter rotation going on, and there's no resistance. See? It cancels one another. The counter rotation, which is what you have in a Cooper pair. See, this is why a wire has no resistance to it, because the angular momentum's canceled. So I noticed you got that transformer over there. What's the difference between? Yeah, that's just another version of this. Now using a larger nut glass, it's a little bit more efficient. Oh, yeah. uh, than this version here, but not by much. Oh, this one's more That's efficient? Right. This is more wattage, isn't it? More power. Yeah. Well, it has the same number it's of turns yeah. as this one does, hmm. except the output core arrangement here is much larger. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's more saturated? So it's bigger. Um, it has a larger uh, surface area for the flux to oppose one another. Oh, okay. So it's so going to lower the output impedance on these coils. Like bigger for gyroscopes. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's our demonstration of our technology. Does the primary have less number of turns than the secondary? Uh, Yes. That's a big piece of nice glass. Stepping up the bolt is on the output. Right. Yeah. yeah, you step it up so that the no low, low voltage, you know, is much higher. 
So if you look at the ratio between number of turns here and number of turns here, you see that we have about a three to one ratio. Yeah. So what makes this one? This is just like uh, it's a dream. possible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I was wondering because I take my own medicine. And she doesn't like Sterling Allen. <laughs> 